and the produce and the weeds are really grown, so. All right, the weeds and the, yeah, well, of course, right, right. God had a sense of humor when he created weeds. Okay. <laughs> Let us prepare for worship. invite you to the front cover of your white bulletin for the confession and forgiveness. We confess our sins before God and one another. God of fire and spirit, you have and redeemed all things through the gift of your Son. Yet we often live as though it makes no difference for us. We choose to remain stuck in old patterns, cling to the familiar and safe, and refuse opportunities to step out in courage and faith. Forgive our cowardice, stubbornness, and willful disobedience. Amen. The Holy Spirit brings a new day, a new chance to make new choices, and renewal between people, creation and creator. Rejoice that you have been forgiven and called sisters and brothers of our Savior and Lord. Amen. Our opening hymn, 802.
The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. And also with you. This is the feast of victory for our God. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. This is the feast of victory. defender. Storms rage around us and within us and cause us to be afraid. Rescue your people from despair. Deliver your sons and daughters from fear and preserve us in the faith of your Son 
Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord. Amen. You may be seated. We have uh, some young children who would be willing to come forward for a minute or three. All right, come on. Oh my God, my bum, bum. no, come on. I need one. I need two, actually, because Jesus said where two or three are gathered. Huh? <clears throat> no? All you're going to make you do is sit on a chair. Huh? You willing to do that? Yeah, you can come sit on a chair. Okay. All right, there you go. There's one. Okay, come on. Yeah, 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 yeah sure, you bet. There, and there's another one. I got two. Oh, I'm going to have three. And a big child, too. That looks the way it looks. Oh. Good to have you here today. Yeah. Oh, boy, I like those tennis shoes. All right. Hey, this is, a, this is great to have you here today. And we're going to be talking about a word, and it's called faith. But I like to think that the definition of that word really is, is trust. Okay, so I want to ask you a question. You're sitting on a chair. How many of you, are, ever since you sat on that chair, are all afraid that it's going to collapse and fall down and break the pieces and you're going to fall on the floor? No? Well, then you know what? You have trust in that chair. You have trust that it's not going to fall apart. It's not going to break. It's going to hold you. That's trust. Sometimes we, we have different kinds of trust. Like if you go to the fair. I don't know if anybody ever goes to the fair and you hold on to your, your mommy or daddy's hand or grandma, grandpa or, or our sister, brother or somebody. You hold on to their hand and that's trust. You're, you, you know that they're going to hold your hand all the time. And so you don't need to be afraid of the big crowds or, or scary noises or anything like that. Trust. We trust Jesus when he says, I am with you always. I'm here always with you. And you can trust me that I will never leave you. I'll never forsake you. And you know that I am always here. Now that's trust. We could call that faith. Faith in Jesus leads me to trust and know that he is always present. Let's pray. Dear Jesus, thank you for helping us to know that you are with us always. Amen. And thank you for being brave to come forward. Good. Thank you. The reading for today is from the book of Hebrews, chapter 11. Now faith is the assurance of things hoped for, the conviction of things not seen. Indeed, by faith, our ancestors received approval. By faith, we understand that the worlds were prepared by the word of God, so that what is seen was made from things that are not visible. By faith, Abel offered to God a more acceptable sacrifice than Cain's. Through his, he received approval as righteous, God himself giving approval to his gifts. He died, but through his faith, he still speaks. By faith, Enoch was taken so that he did not experience death, and he was not found because God had taken him. <clears throat> For it was attested before he was taken away that he had pleased God. And without faith, it is impossible to please God for whoever would approach him must believe that he exists and that he rewards those who seek him. By faith, Noah, warned by God about events as yet unseen, respected the warning and built an ark to save his household. By this he condemned the world and became an heir to the righteousness that is in accordance with faith. By faith, Abraham obeyed when he was called to set out for a place that he was to receive as an inheritance. And he set out, not knowing where he was going. By faith, he stayed for a time in the land he had been promised, as in a foreign land, living in tents, 
as did Isaac and Jacob, who were heirs with him of the same promise. For he looked forward to the city that has foundations, whose architect and builder is God. By faith he received power of procreation, even though he was too old, and Sarah herself was barren, because he considered him faithful who had promised. Therefore, from one person, and this one as good as dead, descendants were born, as many as the stars of heaven and as the innumerable grains of sand by the seashore. All of these died in faith without having received the promises, but from a distance they saw and greeted them. They confessed that they were strangers and foreigners on the earth. For people who speak in this way make it clear that they are seeking a homeland. If they had been thinking of the land that they had left behind, they would have had opportunity to return. But as it is, as it is they desire a better country, that is, a heavenly one. Therefore, God is not ashamed to be called their God. Indeed, he has prepared a city for them. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Grace to you and peace from God our Father, and from our living Lord and Savior Jesus, the Messiah. By faith, our ancestors received approval. By faith, Abraham obeyed when he was called. By faith, Abraham stayed for a time in the land. By faith, Abraham received power of procreation. By faith, by faith, by faith, <laughs> by gory, some of you may be saying, how I wish I could have that said about me and my actions done with faith, responded to by faith. This longing for that kind of faith reminds me of the story a, a mother tells. Her three-year-old daughter was fiddling with a, with a toy trumpet as the mother was watching television. The TV program she was watching featured skilled musicians who played a, a fabulous trumpet solo. The little girl listened intently to the whole song, held up her own little toy trumpet and announced, mine doesn't have that kind of music in it. Many of us can relate to that. We compare our own faith journey to that of the heroes of the Bible. And we are like the little girl who compared her meager efforts to play on a toy trumpet with those of professional musicians playing real trumpets. We say, Abraham and Sarah, Moses and Miriam, David and Ruth, John and Mary, Paul and Priscilla lived their lives by faith. But my life doesn't have that kind of faith guiding it. When, when you and I hear again about faith, the faith of our ancestors Abraham and Sarah, what is it about their faith that we long to have, it's the courage to risk, isn't it? You and I say longingly in the words of an old hymn, oh, for a faith that will not shrink. Oh, to have the faith of Abraham and Sarah willing to take risks at God's command. We are stuck all too forcefully uh, by the line of scripture which says by faith Abraham obeyed when he was called to set out for a place that he was to receive as an inheritance and he set out not knowing where he was going not knowing where he was going wow what a risk taker Remember the words way back in the book of Genesis? The Lord said to Abram, leave your country, your people, and your father's household and go to a land 
that I'll show you. The Bible reports Abraham and Sarah left as the Lord had told them. What risk? What faith? What complete trust in God to lead them? They left behind home, extended family, security, left that all behind in order to follow God's leading. And they did not know where they were going. This is faith. The writer of the New Testament letter to the Hebrews says, faith is complete and utter trust in God. Faith is complete and utter willingness to take risks as God commanded. Abraham and Sarah traveled through hostile lands. Often they were surrounded by idol worshiping people who did not respect the God who was leading the people. Many times they were afraid, at times they were, were, were fearful and that caused them to act foolishly. But they did not shrink back. Oh, how some of us do shrink back because of fear. Uh, when, when, when the newfangled invention of electric lights was first installed in the White House, President and Mrs. Harrison were so intimidated by the power of electricity, they were frightened to touch the light switch. If there were no servants around to turn the lights off, when the Harrisons went to bed, they slept all night with the lights on. The President of the United States and his wife had light available to them, but their fear kept them from accepting and using that power. Uh, some people today say, once I learn to trust God more, then I'll risk because of that faith. Uh, fellow worshipers, that's, that, that's backwards. You and I need to take a step forward in faith first and then see how God leads us to take risks. And when we do, when you and I do follow God and God's call to risk above all his leading, then, why, then you and I begin to have some of that kind of faith which enabled Abraham and Sarah to, to seek not knowing a land where God was leading them. When you and I hear about faith, our ancestors, Sarah and Abraham, many of us long to have that kind of faith, a faith which gives us the courage to risk. But you and I also long for the faith of Abraham and Sarah, a faith that lasts. The Greeks had a, had a race in their Olympic games that was unique. Uh, the winner of the race was not the runner who crossed the finish line first. The winner of the race was the runner who finished the race with his torch still lit. How many of us here today long to win the race of life with the torch of our faith still lit? How you and I long to be able to say at the close of our life what, what Paul wrote in, in his letter to the young Christians in the city of Philippi. I have fought the good fight. I have finished the race. I have kept the faith. Therefore there is laid up for me the crown of righteousness, which the Lord, the righteous judge, will grant to me on that day, and not only to me, but to all who have loved his appearing. Many of us here this morning long to run the entire way through life with a flame of faith still burning for Jesus we may not receive the full promise 
that God has for us in this life, but like our ancestors, as the author of the letter of the Hebrews states, you and I can see those promises ahead of us on the horizon and greet them confident, confident that God will give them to us as well as welcome us into the eternal city of God. Let me say something right now to someone who may be saying, oh, it's easy to live by faith when life goes along easily, when tough questions need to be confronted, when one sings confident hymns of faith in church and lives comfortably the rest of the week. Well, my sins, if I've learned anything in 41 years of full-time parish ministry, it is this. Over and over again, I've seen Christians all but devastated by tragedies of life. Some lost their children to death. Some have watched loved ones suffer day and night. Some have spouses walk away from them after 32 years of marriage. And some have children who turn their back on their own values that they were raised with at home. Some have faithful employee, been in, faithful employees only to be let go decades later by their company. Some have one medical crisis after another in their lives. I've seen over and over again how these very persons have had their faith tested, and yet that is the time when these same persons rise from the ashes of grief and torment and pain and fear with their trust in God still visible. Oh, it hasn't always been easy for such persons to cling to their faith their trust in God in the darkest hours of life, especially when it seems that God's voice is silent. But because these persons remained close to the Christian community, because these same persons week after week came to be worried, nourished in, in God's word and the Holy Sacrament, their faith continued to flow through their lives. And during a hot spell, and a dry spell of summer, I heard of a man who was, was wanting to, to water his grass. He became greatly disturbed when the water came out of his hose. A small grandson who was out in the yard shouted to him, Grandpa, you have your foot on the hose. What a tragedy it is when people stand on the hose of their spiritual nourishment, when they fail to come regularly to worship here at Faith Lutheran Church, fail to receive the renewing waters of God's love and grace, waters which would enable them to confront all that life throws their way. By faith, a faith like that of Sarah and Abraham, a faith that lasts. Jesus said, do not be afraid, little flock, for it is your father's good pleasure to give you the kingdom. So lift up your hearts, fellow worshipers. Be encouraged and be confident. You too can live each moment of each day, of each week, of each year of your life. You can live it by faith. After all, God promised you the kingdom, promised you the eternal city of God. That's why it can be said of you, as it was said of Abraham of old, there goes one who has considered God faithful, the God 
who has promised. So blow your trumpet, make music to your God, the God in whom you live by faith. And now the peace of God that passes all understanding will keep your hearts and minds in Christ Jesus. Amen. Our hymn of the day, I understand, may not have been sung by very many of you. And so we'll have directions about how you sing one, the first two verses, go for it. Yes, I call your attention to this hymn. We sing verse one, then verse two, then we sing the refrain and um, the refrains after that. center part of your white bulletin for the modern creed and invite you to stand as you are able and comfortable. 
We believe that the way we treat one another is the fullest expression of how we live our faith. We find our approach to God from the life and teachings of Jesus Christ, who is our model for living. We stand in God's grace and we live that grace in our attitudes and actions toward one another. We understand the church is a community of people who together make up the body of Christ. We are inclusive and welcome all people seeking a closer relationship with God. We believe that the questions are as important as the answers. We strive to love all and to serve all in Jesus' name as we proclaim our Christian faith. For Christ has given us We pray for the church, the world, and all in need. Your creation longs for generous care, Creator God. Give growth to fields, strength and protection to farmers and laborers who toil in summer's heat. Give the leaders of Alaska and leaders of our nation's government the courage to turn back from the greed of seeking financial gain by polluting irreversibly with mining and debris, pollutants, the hundreds of miles of pristine rivers in Alaska, home to half of this country's salmon, turn us from preserving to preserving the gift of your creation for the sake of our children and our children's children. Word of God. Hear our prayer. Your world, mighty God, reflects your image in billions of unique ways. Touch every life, low and high, rich and poor, and sweep away every heart that is fearful, and bring your merciful will of peace with justice for all. Be with those forcefully separated from their families and with the children who cry out in fear and loss. Work through your church to restore mercy and send rest and comfort to all who are bowed down. Protect police, fire, and first responders from harm. Word of God. Hear our prayer. Your people in this congregation praise you, merciful God, for your almighty help. Comfort those who suffer from anxiety, depression, loneliness, or stress. Provide for those who suffer in any way, especially be a near presence to Fred, Jean, Doug, Leroy, Roy, Christy Krop, whose father, Ken Swanson, has died, and be with all the friends of faith who have asked for our prayers, and be with those for whom we promised to pray now in the silence of our own hearts. Word of God. Hear our prayer. Your communities near and far, God of all countries, often lack basic resources. Supply work, food, fresh water, and health care for those in many places who are in need. Bring relief to those who are overworked and also to those who are underemployed or feel a lack of dignity in their work. Word of God. Yeah. Your people who are in the military, Lord of the nations, those serving at home and those abroad, those who are veterans, those whose bodies and minds have been scarred by warfare, need your renewing strength. Bless them with persons who give them support for daily living. Word of God. Hear our prayer. Your people of all ages in this country, compassionate God, live in fear of violence from guns fired by people filled with hate. Give to our elected officials the courage to risk their own positions for the sake of sane gun laws that will take weapons from military combat on battlefields off our streets and away from businesses and schools and churches and gathering places. Hear the fearful cry of millions in this land and bring healing and comfort 
to those who have had loved ones, children and adults shot to death these past weeks and months and recent years. Word of God. Yeah. Most holy and high God, we give you thanks for our Evangelical Lutheran Church in America, for the work done in service to the world, and for your mercies which are always new. Be with our church now as it continues to spread your good news. Be with our own Janet Mosier as she returns from serving as a voting member to the assembly this past week in Milwaukee. Make her travel safe and her homecomings joyful. Word of God. Yeah. Renew our prayers and renew our zeal for your work, O God. For we trust in your unfailing mercy and rely on your all-encompassing grace. In Jesus' name, amen. amen. The peace of the Lord be with you all. And also with you. Let us share that peace together.
the offertory prayer on the right-hand side of the center of your white bulletin. Together we pray, receive these gifts which we offer to the work of your kingdom and move us with your spirit of power and love. In Jesus' name, amen. The Lord be with you. And also with you. Lift up your hearts. We lift them to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is indeed right, our duty and our joy, that we should at all times and in all places give thanks and praise to you, almighty and merciful God, through our Savior Jesus Christ, who on this day overcame death and the grave, and by his glorious resurrection opened to us the way of everlasting life. And so with the choirs of angels, with the church on earth and the hosts of heaven, we praise your name and join their unending hymn. Holy, holy, holy Lord, Lord God of power and might, heaven and earth are full of your glory, Hosanna. which was betrayed our Lord Jesus took bread gave thanks broke it and gave it to the disciples saying take and eat this is my body given for you do this for the remembrance of me and again after supper he took the cup gave thanks and gave it for all to drink saying this cup is the new covenant in my blood shed for you and for all people for the forgiveness of sin do this for the remembrance of me Lord Remember us in your kingdom and teach us to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. Welcome to the table of the Lord. May the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ strengthen you and keep you in his grace. Amen. Amen. Our post-communion hymn 525.
inside back of your white bulletin, we pray together the prayer after communion. <coughs> Gracious God, in this, this meal you have drawn us, us to your heart and, and nourished us at your table, table with, with food, food and drink, the body and blood of Christ. Now send us forth to be your people in the world and to proclaim your truth this day and evermore. Through Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord. Amen. Our closing hymn, 661. Thank you.